Hey YouTube, in today's video I want to talk about how living nomadically and also statically has affected uh, my thoughts on my build and how it's making me think about the possible renovations or, or changes to, to the van uh, when things start to warm up here in Canada. Before I jump right into it, I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to Seven Gray for featuring me in his uh, seven van, uh, step van <laughs> YouTube channel list. Uh, that was super cool. Um, I, if anyone's hopping over from there, uh, I'm glad to see you. Um, seven, love to meet up with you too, buddy. Uh, loved that video and I met some new uh, channels, I guess, that uh, I hadn't found before that are people doing really cool stuff with uh, step vans. And if you guys, to you know, my general audience, want to see more people doing step fans, I'm going to link out to Seven's video where he kind of goes into a little bit of detail about these other channels. Some of them are, are really big, like uh, Paul Barger, and some of them are people who I hadn't heard of, which is, uh, yeah, really, really cool. So I'll just put that down below, and you can check that out, and I'll get back to uh, the rest of the video. can't really call myself a nomad. Uh, even though my home is mobile, I've only ever really lived in this van in two cities. Uh, when I lived in Nelson, I moved around all the time, and I was uh, just sort of uh, urban camping or camping out. You know, it was the summertime, and so I moved around a lot. You know, I never spent two nights in the same spot sort of thing. And then I moved to Cranbrook, where I did a little bit of that, but over the winter, I have actually been renting a spot. I've mentioned this on the, on the channel before, uh, where the van is just parked. So I am now treating it less like a van and more like a tiny home. And that has presented a interesting uh, situation for me where I've been able to examine both styles, both the nomadic and the static living styles. And I've come up with a few conclusions about how that affects uh, the build that I've created. So when I built my van, I had every intention of coming in through the cab. Cab access was 100% important to me. Um, when living, when doing stealth camping, when living like semi-nomadically is what I'd call it, just moving around one city or one area, um, you want to be able to do that. And you know, I would get up and I would just sort of go through the door uh, that leads to the cab and I'd drive off and I wouldn't leave the van. And that is the way that it should be um, when you are living nomadically. When you're living statically, Entering through the cab is kind of a strange uh, idea, especially the way that I have my van parked right now. Uh, entering, really, the only entrance is through the passenger door, and it's a real pain uh, to get in that way. The cab is, is kind of ugly. It's a big uh, a loss of heat, um, and it's just not where I'd like to enter, especially because I have this door back here. Um, this one here was originally... The more that I've thought about this process, I understand why I chose to do this door the way I did. Um, the less I like it, though, and, and the more that I want to change things up. So the idea behind this was that it's a back door. It's not a front door. It looks like a front door. Everyone thinks it's a front door, and then I walk around, and they go, like, where are you going? Uh, and it just sort of, and the idea was that this is going to be the back door. That I open the top half of this Dutch door in the summer, almost like a nice breeze window, and I love doing that and sitting on the bed. That that's awesome. And then the bottom half is access to the garage, so that definitely works. But living statically, not moving, not really needing access to the cab, uh, I realize I would really like that if that was the front door. I would love to use that as my front door. I can't though because the bed is in the way. And I would have to completely disassemble my bed and just leave my mattress, which doesn't really come apart, like lying down in the middle of my space every day. It's a pain. And it's not really designed to be used as a front door. Uh, but I'm the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking, why can't it be? You know, it, once it warms up a little bit, I'm perfectly capable of making some changes. There's some changes that I want to make anyway to the bed. So... Uh, what would it look like if I were to do a, uh, a van build version 2, which would allow me to live uh, statically over nomadically, but still give me the ability to live uh, semi-nomadically with access to the cab? Um, because I, I, I will probably be doing both. I really have found uh, that living statically uh, it has been really helpful for me. I'm just sort of treating this like a tiny house. 
leave me apart, uh, especially in school. But in the summer, I want to, you know, do some moving around, uh, go camping and disperse myself more. So, uh, what are my options for a van build sort of version two that would allow me to do that? There's a couple ones and it sort of depends on how much work I want to put into it. Uh, the main issue though is this back wall. So uh, I'm going to save the, the version two stuff for another video and just talk about this back wall. So this back wall, there's a big slot on top where this door rolls up and over. And in the summer, I, when I have the door down, which was almost all the time because I wanted to be stealthy, I put pool noodles in that slot uh, to, bro to block any bleep, uh, breeze or light or anything like that from getting through. And then I have this uh, big heavy door here that comes up and over. Uh, the couple of reasons uh, that I didn't like the pool noodles is that whenever I'd open it, they'd knock out and they would get the grease that's in the track onto the white walls. Didn't Wasn't a big fan of that. Um, and the other thing that I don't like about this is it's just annoying. Because so right now I have uh, blankets shoved up underneath of the, like up on top of here. In the I've got some towels, like just trying to block whatever breeze. There's, there's a huge gap in my insulation. So I would really love it if uh, this wasn't a thing anymore. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. One is just straight up insulation. Um, uh, over the winter, I'm realizing, yeah, I could definitely do some improvements there. And the other is, it's just kind of annoying. Um, so, I've come up with a couple solutions that I could use for this. Uh, one is to build a second ceiling that comes sort of down here, um, that would be very thin, I, could be insulated uh, very thinly. I would leave the insulation that's above this too, uh, and just sort, just sort of cover it up. So this would be all ceiling. I would take the ceiling boards that already exist above it and I would just drop them down. Uh, the thing that I don't like about that is, you know, it's going to make a really annoying thing because of the way the lighting is. Yeah, so here you can see the blanket would be that the ceiling would come drop down and then continue. And I think that that is, it's not my first choice of aesthetics. Um, I would rather have one ceiling that goes all the way across. I think it's less cumbersome. It, it it just doesn't look as good, but I could live with it for sure. And I have some ideas for how I could even make that look uh, somewhat good. Um, that's probably the easiest solution. I could get some foam uh, insulation, some like uh, one by twos or or one by ones or I don't know. Build build out that framing. It, that would be like a day project pretty much um that'd be pretty easy that would stop the wind from coming in uh it would let this door roll up all that stuff a couple things that uh you know obviously the the aesthetics of it that, I, that i'm not super thrilled with um but i do like that the other option is i take this door off completely and i build this wall up just a little bit filling insulation solid wall Doing that gives me sort of two options. I can just not have the stealth door that comes down, which I don't want. Um, I do want that ability, 100%. Um, you know, if I was permanently parked, I'd probably do that. But if I still want to be able to move around and be somewhat stealthy, uh, then you need some sort of back door. So, back doors. What are my options for that? Uh, the one that I've really been thinking about is having some sort of durable uh, rubberized canvas. Uh, I work at Home Depot right now when I'm not at school, and they have these uh, trucks that deliver stuff, and they have like this, uh, I forget what they're called. It's like an awning, kind of, that goes off, it all scrunches off to the side, and it's made of this like rubberized canvas material. I'll throw a picture up of that. Uh, that would work, and I was thinking either, either slide it off to the side like they do, or uh, have some sort of a roll-up system, kind of like the, like those blinds that you pull down and they snap back up, uh, or even just something that you had to manually uh, roll up, though that would be really annoying. Uh, a couple things, you know, the obvious downside to that is that now I have like a canvas back, which, you know, anyone with an X-Acto knife can get into, but I also have a door here that locks and the window locks and stuff like that. Um, so uh, it, it's not uh, as unsecure it would be slightly less secure because i'd be probably losing the, the the actual you know lock and all that stuff that goes on the back door um so slight loss of um that sort of security but uh still not complete easy access 
Um, that's one that I'm really thinking about, really considering. Um, I'm not quite sure how that would work, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Um, this is not something that I'm going to do next week, you know. It's really way too cold to do this sort of stuff. So I'd really love to hear what you guys think about doing some sort of a canvas back. Uh, I've seen it done on, you know, industrial trucks, so it wouldn't look out of place. It'd be white. Um, come down, it would probably have those sort of ratchet straps to keep it in place when it's all the way down. Uh, the, pro the, the other in thing about that that's slightly inconvenient is that accessing uh, the back would be kind of a pain. Like, I wouldn't want to, like, to do propane um, and stuff like that. Access anything back there would be kind of annoying. So, downside to that. Uh, but the pro is that inside my actual living space, I don't have that bulky uh, wall. I would actually be losing weight instead of adding weight. Um, and this would be a complete uh, seal over here. So those are the ideas for the back wall and adjusting it to fit with my mostly static but sometimes semi-nomadic <laughs> lifestyle. Um, I will pro I Hopefully I'll do another video talking maybe a bit more about this and talking about why uh, doing that sort of renovation like that, what the advantages are, for how I would redo my layout inside the van. And uh, it just occurred to me, some people might be confused, I will still have some sort of cab access 100% no matter what I do. Um, that's important. There's one last thing that's worth mentioning about these two ideas, the uh, uh, canvas versus this door. With the canvas door, I have more options for the interior. No matter what I do, the bed behind me is going to have to come apart, open in the middle somehow, uh, maybe with slats or something like that, so that I can walk in through this door and, you know, not crawl over my bed. Uh, but uh, if I keep this door, I want it to be a... I want it to open in. And I want it to open in because if it opens in, I can open the door, I can reach out and I can close this door, or I can open it if it's shut. Um, you know, that's not... Uh, right now, I mean, right now can't really do that. I mean, I can shut this door. I can grab the top and I can slam it down, but I can't open it um, from the inside and the cab access. So I still have that. But if I want this to be my main door, I do want the option, if this is shut, to open the, the outside door. And you can do that having this door open in and uh, then opening, you know, the bottom half of the door or, or the whole door. And then there's access to the latch and the lock and all that, and then opening it up from the inside. So that's uh, one consideration for that. The canvas, uh, no matter what I do, I can't open it from the inside. Um, I can't think of a way to do that because the ratchets would be on the outside. So that would always be like a going around the outside sort of a thing. Um, and then, uh, so that then I could keep the door opening out and I might be able to have, say, uh, like if I put like a kitchen counter here or the bed, it could stick in a little bit here. It wouldn't have to completely cut off in that little teeny space there. So just give me a few uh, more options with that. Just something to keep in mind. Please, 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 guys, let me know what you guys think about this. Should I go with the false ceiling? Which means that I can never move, like, the... I can't put in vents or anything like that. So it probably limits also where I can put stoves or something like that. In, in the future, if I really want to go crazy and move everything around. Uh, and keep the wood door added security... Uh, possibly having to change this to an inside door with less options... Or do you think I should try and do the canvas thing um, where uh, this wall is completely, goes straight up a couple more inches. I have a, uh, the hemlock ceiling just goes all the way across. I don't have that uh, sort of unsightly dip. Um, but I have uh, the canvas, which is probably uh, less secure, maybe a little bit more um, uh, prone to flapping around in, in the window when I'm driving or something like that and uh, possibly also uh, less access from the inside. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching this video, uh, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, folks.